Today I wanted to talk about Lulu Publishing. It's not one of the most popular print-on-demand companies that are out there for self-published authors, but I did want to talk about it because they actually have quite a few options for authors. So we're going to list out the pros and cons today and really discuss whether or not you should choose Lulu Publishing as one of your print-on-demand distributors for your book. So today we'll be talking about the distribution options, the price it costs to print a book, the list price that you're going to have to put your book at on retail websites, and then of course the quality of the book itself. I actually ordered a copy of one of my novels to be printed by Lulu, so we're going to be unboxing that today to review the quality. Today's video is actually part of a series of videos here on YouTube, A Beginner's Guide to Self-Publishing a Book. So if you want to learn more about other print on demand companies and what your options are as a self-published author, be sure to check out the playlist. It will be linked down below. But today we're talking exclusively about Lulu. Now if you don't know who I am, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner. And if you want weekly videos on the business of being an author, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. As you can see here, my package for my book, Meet Me at the Summit, has come in. Meet Me at the Summit is a young adult coming of age story, so we're going to talk about this later on and we'll actually open it up and look at the book. But first I want to talk about a few other things you should know about Lulu Publishing, but we'll get to the quality of the book later on. First things first, let's talk about distribution. So Lulu Publishing actually offers wide distribution to their authors. This is wide distribution for your ebook as well as your print book. Right now, I would say the best option for authors for wide distribution is Ingram Spark, but as you guys know from previous videos of mine, Ingram Spark isn't super user friendly. Lulu also gives you the option to avoid distribution altogether and sell the book yourself, whether that be through your website or through an app. So Lulu has quite a few different options. I believe they have two different apps and then they also have the Lulu bookstore. So you can list your book on the Lulu bookstore. Whether or not people are shopping for books on Lulu, I'm not really sure. I know I've never gone to Lulu for books before, but I will say if someone buys your book through Lulu rather than say Amazon or Barnes & Noble, the author makes significantly more money in terms of royalties if the book is bought through the Lulu bookstore. So probably they want authors to encourage friends and family to shop using the Lulu bookstore because they will make more money. So Lulu actually has so many distribution options that it kind of gets confusing. There's like the regular wide distribution, then there's the sell it yourself distribution, there's the sell it yourself with an app distribution, and then there's, you know, just regular distribution. But do know there are quite a few different options, so if that's one of the reasons why you're kind of leaning towards Lulu, I would look into that more. The sell it yourself distribution options are really great because it does allow you to sell the book on your own website and then you get to keep all the royalties because what you'll see later on as we talk is that when you use Lulu and you want to do wide distribution so your book is available to say Barnes & Noble or other websites, you will notice that there's a lot of royalties that are taken out of your pocket and it's just more expensive. But again, we'll talk about that when we get there. Next, let's talk about options because in my opinion, this is what makes Lulu stand out because Lulu does have a lot of cons and you'll learn that as we get to the pricing portion of this video. But I think the one thing they're doing right is the amount of options they have for authors because really it's limitless. Because this isn't just about books, you can do any sort of publishing. Lulu offers publishing for books, notebooks, photo books, calendars, comic books, magazines, cookbooks, yearbooks, and of course ebooks. So that's a lot of different options and I say it's limitless because with those options you also have different options like different paper types, different bindings, you could do coil bindings rather than like regular saddleback binding. You can have something that's more like a magazine. There's really just a lot of different things that you can do on Lulu. Which brings me to my next point, the price to print your book. So 
So Lulu has a cost calculator on their website. So if you're considering them, I would highly recommend playing around with the cost calculator because it will make it very clear how much it will cost to print your book, your magazine, your photo book, whatever you wanna do. Now with that said, with more options, usually means that they don't specialize as much. So that's why with other print on demand companies, it's so much cheaper to print your book. Whereas for Lulu, you'll notice that the price to print your book or whatever project you're working on is gonna be significantly higher. With that said, they do offer bulk discounts. So say you wanna order a bunch of copies for yourself, whether you want them to sell through your website or you want them to sell uh, at book signings, you wanna order like 100, 500 copies of your book. The more copies of your book you order, the bigger a discount you get. And with their bulk order discount, you can get anywhere from 5 to 15% off of your order. So how much can you expect to pay for your book? And this is the price you as an author pay for author copies. So for me, I paid $8.66 for my paperback copy of Meet Me at the Summit. And then I also used their price calculator to figure out how much it would have cost me for a hardcover edition. So for a hardcover edition that didn't have a dust jacket, it would have cost me $15.62. But if I wanted my hardcover edition to have a dust jacket, then it would have cost me $19.22, which is basically the price of a normal hardcover that you would buy at a bookstore. And keeping in mind, this is the price I pay to have a copy of the book mailed to me. So this is not the retail price. That is something different. And just to give you guys an idea of how expensive it is to print through Lulu, when you print through Kindle Direct Publishing, you can cut that price in half. So with KDP, you're usually expecting to pay about $3 to $4 for a paperback copy or $8 to $10 for a hardcover copy of your book. Now, what about retail price? So again, Lulu does have a lovely calculator that you can use where you can put in all the info for your book and then at the very bottom, you can figure out how much money you wanna make per book sale or figure out the retail price. So I started off first by putting in how much money I wanted to make per book sale. I try to make $3 per book sale. So that's what I put into Lulu. I said that I wanted to make $3 per book sale. And then from there, they told me how much I would have to list my price for. So from exploring their website, I couldn't figure out an exact breakdown on why it's so expensive. I just assume it's so expensive because it's so expensive for them to print a book. But for my paperback book, if I wanted to make $3 per book sale, I would have to list my book at $23.40. And because that was so freakishly expensive, I changed things around and figured out what the minimum price was, and the minimum price I could list my paperback book at was $15.90, which is expensive for a paperback book. And keeping in mind, I'm basically making no money at that point if I list my book for that cheap. So if paperbacks are gonna be that expensive for customers, how expensive are hardcover books gonna be? So again, I used the calculator and I sat down and I said I wanna make $3 off of my hardcover book. They told me if I wanted to make $3 off of my book, then I would have to list my book at $37.90, which, I would not pay that much for a hardcover book. So then again, I sat down and I switched it up with Lulu and said, okay, what's the minimum price I can list it at? And the minimum price is $30.40, which is still outrageously expensive. As a reminder, that's about $10 more than what the industry standard price is. And it's pretty typical and expected for self-published authors to list their books higher priced because we are self-published and it is more expensive to print every single book. But $10 over the normal price of a hardcover book is ridiculous. And again, even at the $30.40 price range, I would be making next to nothing. All that money just goes into printing the book and giving everyone else a cut that is part of the distribution process. 
So basically what I'm saying is I don't think Lulu is good for a regular print on demand distribution basis. I think they are best if you want to order copies for yourself for a unique project. And when I say unique project, I mean maybe you want to print a notebook with a spiral binding or maybe you want to do a magazine or a comic book. There's not a lot of places you can go to get comic books printed. So I feel like Lulu is good for that. But even then, I would not use Lulu to distribute my book. I wouldn't want them to be able to take all the cuts of the money. What I would do is I would order the copies for myself and sell the books myself through my website. Otherwise, you have to price your book extremely high and then not make that much money off of it. So that's just my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is down below. But with all that said, let's move on to the quality review. Since I'm now saying that literally the best part of Lulu is that you can try out a bunch of different printing options that you don't have through other print on demand distributors, that does make me a little bummed that we're opening up uh, just a regular like novel. I kind of wish that I would gotten like a photo book or a magazine. I wish I ordered something that was unique to Lulu and kind of shows them off as a print on demand distributor. But we are just doing a regular novel today. My book Meet Me at the Summit. I will say I ordered a children's book from Lulu. I have a children's book titled Mr. Moon's Big Move and I did do a video unboxing here on YouTube. So if you want to watch that video, it will be linked down below. I will let you know I wasn't super impressed with the quality, so I'm kind of afraid to open this up here. So this will be my first time kind of seeing a regular novel from Lulu, because before I was just unboxing a children's book, which was full color, and I wasn't impressed with the quality of the color interior, but we're gonna see what the actual novels are like. I will say, out of all the print-on-demand places, they get the award for having theirs packaged the most. I don't know if that makes it the best necessarily. Uh, okay, so we have the order form. Uh, we have the book. It's actually, let me absorb for a minute. I'm actually surprised they printed the book without a barcode. That's kind of shocking, but I will now easily be able to tell which book was Lulu because it doesn't have a barcode. So I assume uh, either when you actually turn on the distribution that they'll add the barcode or perhaps you need to add the barcode but they didn't give me an error message you would think that if I was supposed to add a barcode on that they would have told me and been like I can't print this until you add a barcode but they didn't uh, but let's flip through okay so first things first we have just the exterior here which is the cover wrap honestly it looks pretty good um, I don't see any printing errors. Everything looks actually really nice and clean. So happy about that. And then when we open it up inside, I will say this paper is like, is thick. And if you guys watch my Barnes and Noble unboxing and review, you'll hear me talk about how sometimes thicker paper isn't always better because it kind of signifies it as a self-published book sometimes. Whereas if you pick up a regular book on your shelf, you'll notice that the paper of regular books by traditional publishers, the paper is actually pretty thin. And it's that's just kind of what readers are used to. So then when you have a self-published book and the paper is like super thick and the book feels thick in their hands, it kind of is just like, noticeable and it's not necessarily a bad thing it can kind of just be a signify to some readers like oh this isn't like a normal book now let's point out the headers and footers because I did have this issue with Barnes & Noble Press. With Barnes & Noble Press, they like cropped it a little bit too much on the top, I think. Um, but again, that could have been my bad. But here for the Lulu edition, it actually looks pretty good. Like I wouldn't mess with it. I actually like where the headers and footers are. So there is one big, pretty huge issue that I'm finding in here. And um, that is the bleed section, which always seems to be an issue with some print-on-demand distributors. So you can see here, chapter four, the bleed is perfect. It's cropped perfectly. We don't see any white at the edges. It looks great. However, if we turn to chapter nine, there's a pretty significant white spot. 
And when I first saw this, I thought, oh my God, maybe my files were the issue. Did I screw up on something? But it's weird because these are both chapter headers that are on the left side of the page. So if I set up the document correctly or incorrectly, it should at least be consistent to how the cropping is. But then I noticed when I flip through the pages, some have more crop issues than others. Some of them are perfect, some of them have huge gaps and some of them have a very small gap. It's all over the place, which means that their printing process, whatever it is, isn't lining up the pages 100% correctly. Now, is this a huge deal breaker? I would say only if you have a bleed section like my book does. If you have a book that's just a chapter header and it doesn't have like fancy art like this, I think you're fine. No one's gonna notice if the pages are the slightest bit out of place. Cause I'm saying this is like an eighth of an inch, not even. Like that is the only thing that I'm spotting wrong with the interior. But honestly, other than that, that's the only issue I can see in terms of the printing quality. And then again, the paper quality, I would say is a total preference thing. I personally like a book that's floppier and this book is just kind of like stiff where if I was reading it, I would literally like the, the pages don't settle down. Like the book wants to stay closed. Whereas let's take a regular traditionally published book. If we open it, you know, it kind of just, even if I hold it just like this, it stays open and the book itself is floppier and the pages feel thinner. They even, it sounds weird, it sounds thinner, whereas this paper is just a little bit more stiff. Um, again, which is just a preference thing and does, uh, and does sometimes signify to people like, oh, this might be a self-published book. So this is Lulu. Let me know what you guys think of the quality down below. I know last time I did a Lulu video, I was really disappointed in the quality. This time, not quite so much, but I am curious like, how the color interior is these days. Like, has it gotten better since I had my children's book because I wasn't super impressed with the quality of my children's book I got from Lulu. Like the printing quality was bad. The cropping, again, was bad. Like they cropped the bleed the wrong way also. So that's something that's proving to still be inconsistent with them. But let me know if you print through Lulu or what you think of them or if you have a favorite print-on-demand company. I will be comparing all of the print-on-demand companies in a later video. I'll be comparing all the qualities side-by-side side and even the pricing side-by-side. Side. So I can't wait to do that video. If you wanna see it, make sure to subscribe. If you want exclusive content, be sure to join as a YouTube member. I post monthly exclusive videos to members where I talk about goal setting and my income. Otherwise, that is it for this month. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe.